Okay, so I've been struggling a little bit to figure out how I'm going to get transfer this curve from this bottom piece of the mold, this pine that's sitting on here with the weights on it. I've been trying to figure out how I can get that curve uh, onto a template so that I can then transfer and, and cut some pieces to become the bottom, the base bottom of this that, that will hold it and hold that curve. The plan calls for using 2x6 underneath it down here. But because that's going to be, if that would be in the middle, it'd be also corresponding right in the middle with where the, uh, the, the boards are for the center board slot. So I don't want that right in the middle. So I'm going to use 1 by, and I, I ripped a 1 by 10. I've got uh, two nice pieces here of, uh, it's about 6 foot, 1 by, it's about 1 by 4 and a half. And then what I did is I cut out some poster board and taped it together to where I had 5 and a half feet long. And then I, I taped it up on the, on the wood over there on the boat. And, uh, and just marked my line over the top of the uh, top of the, the piece of pine that's sitting up there. And then I, I carefully marked exactly where the stations are. And then I'm just going to take, take the scissors and cut along that line and then put that up on the top of one of these pieces of pine, actually both of them, and cut those out. And that should make my base for the underside of the mold. Alright, more as we get more done. So I've cut out this piece um, and I kind of wasn't sure which one to use. I've got the, the big one which would still be a, a fair template and then this one and then I almost put it on this piece of wood upside down but then I realized okay it has to be it has to be shaped like that in order to have the bottom have the shape that I need. Now, I may be able to still use this exact same template for um, the board that has to be cut for uh, the, the center board part that goes on the other side. So this, this could prove to be a good thing. I, I took my pencil and, and uh, drew it on here. So now we should be able to just hopefully cut this out with the jigsaw. It comes up to here and I'm up to nothing. So I used as much of the board as I could. And uh, comes back to there. I'll cut it out and see what happens. I'm gonna get rid of that knot too. So I cut these out, and I uh, cut them out separately with the jigsaw. And no matter how hard you try, they don't come out the same. So I clamped them together here, and uh, took the belt sander and went over them. And I think I've got them to a point now where they're they're pretty even, pretty smooth. And I should be able to. Um, put one of these under both sides of this and screw through that pine and hopefully um, get the bottom of this with that fair curve set. So we'll see how that goes and move on. So the next step was to try to figure out how to make this this back bottom board here. Now I knew it needed to be about 40 inches long and uh, I took a protractor and I figured this angle from here going up here and it looked to be about 10 degrees. The other thing that I did was measure with the ruler and remember a quarter inch equals an inch so this was about an inch and a half from here to here so roughly six inches uh, in actuality full size. So. I took the electric plane and uh, cut my board. I did my half breadths just like before on the other board. And I think you can see down here, I went about six inches back to here. And that's where I started with the power plane and then I just trimmed it down. And you can see I got more than feathered on the end there. And then I took the sander and just kind of sanded it. It didn't have to be perfect. I knew it was going to be close. And I didn't take the protractor to it, but I'm gonna, that's got to be close to 10 degrees. So I think we're good. The other thing that I thought was, and I've been questioning how in the world to build the deadwood, 
I'm beginning to figure it out. In fact, uh, I, I put this little thin piece of uh, wood on here, and it's even with the transom, so it's laying flat on the transom at the transom's angle and coming up. I've known for a long time that I was going to have to cut off the tail end of the keel here, and here you can tell just almost exactly how much is going to have to come off of there. And then this comes up here, and you can see then that uh, our lead's going to fill up, and actually part of the top of the lead has to be cut off, and it shows that in the plan. So I feel pretty good about my dimensions on this, because uh, that takes the, the back end right where it's supposed to be. And I, I think that I've got a pretty, uh, pretty close replica based on the plan of what that's supposed to look like uh, for this keel mold. Now, I haven't screwed the boards that I cut down on the underside of this yet because I want to figure out the, the boards that I need to put in in the middle here and put them in first just so I've got room to screw them in. In other words, the boards that, that need to mount on the top of this and will have to be, be angled here for the center board so we don't get lead in the mold where the center board's supposed to be. And I've got it figured. I know that it's 28 and a, 28 and 5 inches back from the front, back to this mark right here, is where the center board hole starts. In other words, if I would lift this up, you would see the, the slot underneath there. And then it's 43 and a quarter inches. So I measure from, from this mark up here, 43 and a quarter back. Now I haven't done that yet, but it's going to come out, well, right about here. Here. Because I can see underneath there where the post is at the end of the centerboard trunk. So I know that's just about right. I have some help today. It's still just terribly cold outside after the blizzard from yesterday. So all three of these goofballs are in here. Well, I made quite a bit of progress last night on this. Um, keel mold and a couple of things happened that I, I was not nearly high enough on my angle uh, with this this tail end of this thing and uh, so I had to adjust that um, I got my two pieces of, of one by screwed together and this is the the board that fits on the top of here uh, so that you have a slot in the in the lead casting for the centerboard trunk. And so we got that mounted on there. It was tricky because I had to screw from the bottom and I couldn't see where the center line was. And it took about four tries, but we finally got it. Um, I got the, the base pieces on here that hold it up. So those are those one by pieces of, of pine that I had cut to get that curve. So you can see how that now would be correspondent with the curve of the of the keel, the wood keel. And then that back part back there is where the dead wood goes underneath in there. Um, I want to point out a couple of things. Um, part, part of how I realized that I was messed up with, with not having this tail end of this going up at a steep enough angle was I started working on putting the uh, making a, a side piece that will go here along here and when I started looking at the measurements it, it just wasn't coming out now what I've done is I've, I've drawn it out on this this piece of 1 by 12 and this part back here has is is down three quarters of an inch here because it has a, a a piece a lid that goes over this so the the reason this is laying here like this is because in order to draw these lines i basically just took this up and put it up there on uh the the side of this thing 
and then just trace the lines off on it. Now, it's not at the right height. I had to, to raise it up, build it up with 2 by 4 and whatever on top of the saw horses. But what I found, you can see here, I, I drew this all out on, <laughs> on the other side and about three or four times and realized that it just wasn't coming out right because I couldn't get the measurements to, to match up. So anyway, it's difficult to film this and show you what I'm talking about, but I knew that this had to come up here like that. And so, like I said, I just, I put two by four on top of the sawhorse and built this up till I got to a point where I could hold it up there and just trace out the side of that, what that looks like. <clears throat> this part up here was quite troubling and, and I've struggled the whole time to figure out the dimensions off the plan. Let's talk about that just for a second. I guess I'm a special kind of dummy because uh, I look at this and just find it all terribly confusing. I see this six inches here, and I'm thinking, well, maybe that's six inches in here. Well, no, it's not. You have to pay particular attention to the way these arrows are. And I finally figured this out. That's an up arrow. That's an up arrow. That's a down arrow. So between this down arrow and this up arrow is three and a half inches. That's not another six inches there. Obviously, the scale wouldn't be right either. It's six inches from this down arrow to this up arrow. Similarly here, this entire distance is eight and a quarter. Now the other thing you have to remember is that you have to add an inch because that's just to the top of the lead. And the lead pours in here an inch short of the, of the mold. So that just adds confusion to it. But anyway, so I finally figured that out. The other thing that you can do it's like here's this center board trunk template, which is this middle board that I've got screwed on there now. Take the ruler and measure it. So we've got the ruler on there. We can see that that's um, about an inch and three eighths. So an inch is, remember, is four. An inch and a quarter is five inches. So about five and a half inches at station 12. So at station 12, come over here and that's right at five and a half inches so I feel like I got that cut out and on there right that was the other thing though that happened to me with, with this particular dimension coming up for this side piece here to cut this out like say station 18 here at station 18 it's showing me seven and nine sixteenths. I'm like, well, there's no way it's that much there. This is seven and three quarters. Well, this is the total distance here. Like I said, I, I feel kind of dumb, but I'm glad I figured it out. So anyway, when I finally figured that out, then I was able to realize that this angle here simply was not high enough. So in that last video, when I showed that on the back of the boat with that little stick on the transom, that's actually going to come up higher, which is going to mean that my deadwood is going to have to be a little, a little steeper. But I still believe that it'll come up to the right angle to the end of the to the end of the lead. And this is what I was talking about, where you have to cut it off. So anyway, I hope this helps. I'm going to try to cut out the sides now. Being that I jacked with this angle on the tail of this thing. I'm going to lift this board back up here and get these lines to correspond before I try to cut it out. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and look for Jenkins Boatworks on Facebook.